I'm proud of being Roma. I don't say, hello, my name's Sandra and I'm Roma. I just say, hello, I'm Sandra. Although, you know, it's quite a common name amongst Roma. So, of course, I'm telling them I'm Roma. And usually people say, are you really Roma? They don't say, but you're not dark enough and you live in a modern way. But... Sandra Heredia, qualified in business management, doesn't conform to stereotypes either inside or outside her community. The news of the Roma expulsions from France has provoked universal condemnation from Spanish Roma organizations. On the 4th of September, Sandra took part in a demonstration in Paris, representing qualified Roma women in Spain. It was incredible. It was an extraordinary experience because we were demonstrating as representatives of a state council for the Roma. We had our banner and the Spanish flag, so people came up and asked why we were there. We marched from the Rue de la République to the Place de la Bastille. People thanked us for being there, for supporting them. Esto nos da un miedo tremendo. It frightens us. We disagree with Nicolas Sarkozy's attitude and the French government. But the worst for me is that this is happening in a country which calls itself the father of democracy, fraternité, égalité and liberté. And the problem isn't being Roma as such, it's being poor. Manuel loves Triana. The area where he was born is a symbolic one for Roma in Seville. The first documented mention of Roma in Spain dates from 1425. Currently, it's estimated that up to half a million Spanish people are ethnic Roma, and nearly 40% of them live in Andalusia. For the Roma, Andalusia is the promised land. The key to this is cohabitation, mutual understanding between the two groups in the population. Because of this, we've eliminated all the barriers and we live side by side. Andalusia has always been a melting pot of civilizations and cultures. Roma, Arabs, Jews and others contribute to the region's identity. Both the faces and the music reflect this mix. As everywhere in the past, the Roma weren't always welcome on Spanish soil. But recent policies have focused on helping Roma and specifically targeting their needs. And now the challenge is to build on tolerance to achieve real integration. The key to success is to have policies in place which increasingly promote access to rights and duties, like all other citizens and all other Andalusians. The Roma arrived in Spain during another era, another political, economic and social context. But can the Spanish experience serve as an example elsewhere? Is this policy exportable? Of course, here the philosophy and the participation of Roma in public administration is remarkable. And in fact, I think that Europe is increasingly looking at Spain when drawing up policies supporting Roma integration. There's been great progress in the past few years, especially as regards their access to goods and services, accommodation, education and employment. And that, of course, has benefited most of the Roma, even if there are still some big problems to resolve. At the age of 75, El Vathi, a few minutes from the centre of Seville, is the oldest shantytown in Europe. When Francisco Franco came here, he promised decent housing for the inhabitants. But after decades of disappointment, 900 Roma still live here. As soon as you say you're from El Vacie, they won't give you a job. And I've passed my exams, I have my CV, but it's useless. They won't give me a job just because of where I live. Some of the Roma here are newly arrived from Eastern Europe. But the Andalusian authorities, determined to eradicate all shanty towns, will not authorize further construction. Let me be clear. I don't see them as brothers, but I'm Roma, like them, and they have rights like I have, and I have a plot and a hut, they also have the right to live. On the 
On Tuesdays and Fridays, the police comb the shanty looking for new huts, built for the most part by Eastern Europeans. The aim is to eradicate the remaining shanty towns in Andalusia and to prevent any new ones being built. But as soon as they're dismantled, they're rebuilt. And the regional government realizes that they still haven't found a permanent solution for the Roma from the east. Having been expelled on various occasions, the Mihalashi family has special permission to park their caravan here. They've been in Spain for four years and in Seville for the last two. A few months ago, the father found a job as a mechanic and the family's three daughters now go to school. In Romania, we have nothing, so everyone comes to Spain, France, or Italy to earn some money. Lots of people came despite the quota system to make money, to look after their children, and to get them into school, to build or rebuild a house because there have been so many floods. In Romania, we can't work. We haven't got houses there, or here either. But now my father has a job, and he goes there every day. The Mihalashi family have been supported by Spanish organization Romani Union, which has set up an information center for the community. Jose goes to see them regularly to see how they're doing. The Romani Union is a 100% Roma entity and considers the Roma people as universal. So when we see this increased migration from the east of Europe, we realize that this newly arrived population has certain needs. The links between all Roma mean we have to help, we have to intervene to improve their standard of living. But Manuel Garcia Rondon is convinced that the Roma's finest hour is still ahead of them. Europe is aging, and there are 12 million Roma in Europe. We are a very, very young people, and they're going to need us to work. So they should treat us right, because very soon they'll need us. Please, don't be mean to us. And so we leave the Roma here in Seville. The next report in this series about the Roma will come from Hungary, in the heart of Europe. That's next week in Reporter.